be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Christ, our God, make us worthy on this Hosanna Sunday to go out to meet you at your glorious second coming, just as the crowds went out to meet you at your first coming. They carried palms and olive branches while shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord to save us and to renew us. To you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, be glory now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the only begotten Son, the eternal, holy, and blessed Word, whose holiness is boundless. To the good Master who willingly humbled himself, although he is the power and the wisdom of God, and to the one who is glorified by spiritual powers, and who was pleased with the praises of infants and children. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, in the heavens you are carried on a chariot of light. Yet on earth you ride on a donkey's colt. You are hidden from the spiritual powers, and yet you are praised by your holy disciples in the streets of Jerusalem. O Holy One, you are seated upon the throne of your glory, and yet you are honored by the crowds the old and the young infants and children who spread their cloaks and their branches before you. In your grace you have planned all this for our salvation. Now, O Lord, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to celebrate this feast with joy and gladness and with reverence for your profound humility. Prepare us to go out to meet you at your second coming with purity, wearing robes of glory, and shouting with those who celebrate, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In that eternal feast, may we and our departed raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
O Christ, you are pleasing to the Father who sent you, and you are the pure incense who has made creation fragrant, bringing joy to the world. You fulfilled what was said by the prophets, and you were delighted by the praise of the children. May we rejoice in the sweetness of your love, make our souls and senses fragrant with the purity of your holiness, so that we may praise and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kodishat, Aloha, Kodishat, Chayelatono, Kodishat, Zion, sing hymns of glory, O Jerusalem, give praise, for your gates have been strengthened, listen and accept the truth. St. Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all the holy ones in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the overseers and ministers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God at every remembrance of you, praying always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right that I should think this way about all of you, because I hold you in my heart, you who are all partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. 
And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that my situation has turned out rather to advance the gospel, so that my imprisonment has become well known in Christ throughout the whole Praetorium. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, And on the next day, when a great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and they went out to meet him. And they cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found an ass, and he sat upon it, as it is written, Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes seated upon an ass's colt. And his disciples did not understand this at first. But when Jesus had been glorified, they called to mind that these things had been written about him, and that they had done this for him. And so the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from death, these continued to testify. This is also why the crowd went out to meet him, because they heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you gain nothing. Look, the entire world has gone after him. Now, there were some Greeks among those who had come up to the worship at the festival. And they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. And they said to him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. And Philip went and he told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and they told Jesus. 
This is the truth, peace be with you. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As with all of our liturgical year and with the divine mysteries, the sacraments, it is always about the past, the present, and the future. The reason why in our Syriac tradition, this is the biggest day of the year. People who never go to Mass in the Latin equivalent, that's the Christmas people. In the Syriac tradition, it's Palm Sunday. And as I've recalled to mind to you, 10 years ago in Egypt, when the bombs went off around Cairo and Alexandria and other areas, it was on Palm Sunday. Because the Muslims knew either, every, any day of 365, that is the day that the churches will be jam-packed. And it's also why so many children died in those bombings. Because it is also about the children not because they're children, but because it is the example for us to have the wonderment before the things of God, to fight against being jaded in our lives, becoming used to, routine, accustomed, habitual. Children, everything is wonderful. Yesterday when we celebrated Lazarus Saturday, and the children had done their skit beautifully last year, yesterday, I have to say. The littlest ones coming up, the four-year-olds, the five-year-olds, the six-year-olds, are waiting for the piñata. <coughs> have to do the piñata. Just to see the delight of what? We're going to hit a piece of paper and have candies fall down. In itself, it is so simple. And yet, to see the kind of brilliance and the wonder and the delight of just waiting for this. And as I told them yesterday, the piñata, its origin, coming from a Catholic culture, the original piñata is a starburst, but it has seven rays coming out of it. Yesterday, it only had five. But it's supposed to have seven originally because they are the seven capital sins. That's why you hit it. It's the seven capital sins and being disciplined by our mortifications. And then, of course, in disciplining ourselves, then out comes all of the sweetness of God, the candies fall. It's a very simple image. But that wonderment of the children to see and to want and desire, that is why in the Syriac tradition we surround everything about the children. Because that wonderment at the desire is meant to be ours. That's why I began with the quotation with the Greeks who come to, our, to come to the disciples and to say to Philip, Sir, we want to see Jesus. That desire, I desire, I wish to see Jesus, has to be the very center of what is past, present, and future in the mystery of Hosanna Sunday. Yes, we commemorate a past event, but if you read the Husoyo, you see the contrast that is taking place, that the God of majesty, before whom the angels themselves hide themselves because of the glory of that divinity, has chosen to be praised by human beings in the streets of Jerusalem. That the God who rides upon the chariot of the cherubim in his glory and majesty, as the Psalms say, rides upon a donkey, bouncing back and forth down the side of the hill. And so you see the contrast between God's present magnificence and his praise by little ones, by the innocent, by the children. Because the children, of course, see the adults, and the adults go to see our Lord. Not all for the best reasons. Some of them go because they heard he does miracles. He raised someone from the dead a couple weeks ago. They want to see these things, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we also know because the intention is not great, they're also going to be the same people within a few days' time that are going to be screaming for his blood. So when we celebrate Hosanna Sunday, it is about the past to be commemorated, and it is about the future. So that in the Husoyo, you see continually, and in the opening prayer of the liturgy today, 
It's about the end of the world. We go out. It's the reason why the children have lighted candles. Well, they won't light them this morning. We have two reasons for that. One, it's children. And two, it's carpet. When we go outside someday for our processions, then it's okay. Then the wax can fling all over the place. But in these simple little things, we do this. And this year will only be the children for us to go around the church. And we'll go around one time complete, a half a time, and then come down the center. Your little message winds up saying three times, but someday. But for the moment, we'll have this. The children decorated their candles yesterday. That procession is signifying the future of our desire to go out and meet our Lord on the day of judgment. And that is very Syriac. We are always turned towards the end of the world. That is the spirituality of the Maronite church. We wait for that last day. We desire that last day. We desire the manifestation of our Lord in his glory. And that's the reason for the candles. It's echoing the parable of the 10 bridesmaids, the 10 virgins, five wise, five foolish, who go out with their lamps to wait. It's why this evening at 6.30 will be the coming into the harbor. And that is a candlelight procession. That is a candles and that with big people. We will have those candles lit tonight, this evening. But that is the entrance to open up the Holy Week, to open up the great week of the Passion. So at sundown this evening, at 6.30, we will begin this. But again, the same symbolism of the candles, of the lamps, of light, that we go out garbed, as it says in the Husoyo, in robes of glory. Allow us to be transfigured by your grace so that in great joy we may approach you on that day of judgment. That is also the meaning of Palm Sunday. It's not just that we receive the blessed palms, which are magnificent sacramentals to take home, but it is past, present, and future. And in that present transformation of grace, it's because then, in that transformation of grace, we can commemorate what the events truly were 2,000 years ago. And in that transfiguration in this present moment, prepare us for that day of judgment. In the prayers this morning in the, in the church's office of Safro, there is several times of reference to the kingdom. Have your kingdom become present among us, that our desire is to enter into your kingdom on that day of judgment. And there is one of the prayers that says explicitly, may your kingdom come because of us, and among us. It's an interesting notion. Jesus hasn't come yesterday because our sins impede him from coming. There is still purification. There is still transformation by grace that has to come. That's the vision of the Church of Christ. Some of you are be very aware of the fact of evangelical groups who try to push the political situation of Israel, thinking that Israel's promotion will bring, the, will bring the day of judgment closer. This is absurd. That's politics. It's politics and it does a tremendous, tremendous injustice to the people of Palestine. Well, that's another conference and sermon at some other point. When the Christian church prays that your kingdom come because of us, it is saying, transfigure us by your grace, make us holy, so that we are actually disposed to see you right now, your kingdom in its fullness. And so may it come because of us and come among us. That relational transformation that takes place, that begins at the parish and family level, so that we are able then to have a relational difference by grace with everyone with whom we come in contact. The sad part is that when we come into contact with others, so many of the baptized are dragged down to the level of the world in that relationship. But the vision of the church has always been that we are meant to be transfigured by grace so that the kingdom be there because of us and among us so that our relational transfiguration allows that to touch other individuals and raise them up from the ignorance of this world of darkness, as it says in the anaphora of St. John Marin. That is a difficult thing to do. 
It's easy for us to be dragged down to the level of the world. Well, because that's where we are by our birth. It's natural to us. But to raise up relational transformations in grace, that's hard. That's fasting. Always remembering that the word fast means strength. And fasting means strengthening. That is the whole thing we've been doing for weeks to transform ourselves, to purify our hearts, so that relationally that kingdom will come among us. A relationship which are always reciprocal. God loves us, we respond to that love, he draws us closer into love, gives us more love, and we love and develop greater virtue as we go on. This continual reciprocity of the kingdom among us. So I apologize this morning that the Mass was late. But we have on this day actually a perfect example of the relationship of the kingdom. So I was delayed this morning because the phone rang at 8 o'clock as I was coming into the church to tell me that Lolo had passed away this morning at 2 a.m. This relationship of the kingdom among us this beauty of her reposing in Hosanna Sunday. The relationship, because as I saw her on Thursday, and we knew those are the days from Thursday, certainly onward, Friday onward, she was actively dying. But she was very much aware when I was there, she couldn't speak. And we had told her, I thanked her, because following in the footsteps of Saint, Saint Rafka, Lolo had embraced the cross that was asked of her in so many different angles of illnesses, not just one. She died of cancer as like the, the, the last straw, but so many other issues going on. And she embraced them freely, and she embraced them with great generosity for St. Joseph's. So on Thursday when I saw her, I said, well, I just want you to know we have children. We are expecting babies being born this spring. We have conversions and baptisms. I want to thank you for having carried the cross over these many years for us. But I told her on Thursday that on Saturday the children will all be coming and we'll be doing Lazarus Saturday and the skit for the raising of Lazarus and all that. I said, the children on that day will pray for you reciprocity, the kingdom among us. Which is why I don't know if the kids caught it yesterday. But at the end of the mass, we went over, knelt down in front of the image of Our Lady and prayed a decade of the rosary for her yesterday morning. At the end of which we had the invocations of Sacred Heart of Jesus have mercy on us. And then we finished with the invocation, Our Lady of Sorrows, pray for us. Because we always call her Lolo. But of course, it's an abbreviation of her name, which is Dolores. And most people don't know that Dolores is actually just the Latin word for sorrows. I mean, her patron saint is Our Lady of Sorrows. And as Sue told me this morning, her middle name is Concepcion. And we laughed and we said, how utterly Mexican. Dolores Concepcion, okay, this is beautiful. So that she should walk in the image under the mantle of Our Lady of Sorrows to bring forth grace in collaboration. That is the kingdom because of us. That is the kingdom among us. It is a beautiful example. Unfortunately, that's two of the great generous souls who have been carrying crosses. There are others, thank goodness unseen, hidden in their sufferings and their sorrows. But they embrace the kingdom and they pick up those candles of light in their sufferings for the glory of God and for us. So that when we read these things about what is Hosanna Sunday about in its celebration, it is about the kingdom. It is about the transformation of the human spirit and it is a transformation of the relationship between the human beings. And so, on this blessed day, we wish you a Barik Shanini, 
our most blessed Hosanna Sunday, that we ask God to expand us in that luminosity, in that generosity, and bring us great grace to desire with great intensity the fullness of the kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
the special transfer hymn in your pews for Palm Sunday, for Hosanna Sunday. Accepted the offerings of our ancestors, 
Now accept these offerings which your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. We remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Agabus. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to God. us and make us worthy of the eternal reward reserved for men and women of peace. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we offer you these holy mysteries, that through them you may free us from the sufferings caused by sin, and enable us to work for justice, that we may raise glory to you. 
now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. With heart, mind, and tongue we give you thanks, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one true God. Join spiritually to the invisible choirs and countless ranks. Sorry. Totally done. Father of mercies, Lord of creation, Lord of the universe, unsearchable God, you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, born of you and equal to you. You stole my offer. I will get it. This is not a good day. Excuse me. Ay, that's right. Pray that my senility is not going to deepen too much faster. <laughs> Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, and adore you, and give you thanks. O maker of all things, visible and invisible, the highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, the angels, archangels, and the heavenly host all sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations, they cry out and they proclaim. Holy, 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 holy,
Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, we remember your death, your resurrection, your ascension into heaven. You're sitting at the right hand of God the Father, at your glory is second coming, when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people, and your inheritance, implore you, and through you, and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We profess our faith Lord, in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, hear us, our How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin Maria, O Manin Maria, Manin Maria, O Nite Moro, O Chayu Kodisho, O Nachen Alainu Al Korbono. Descent, he may make this bread a life giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Make the mixture in this chalice, the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, for those who receive it. Holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church which you founded upon the rock of faith, so that the gates of shale shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts, until the end of time and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops and sp who spread the word of truth especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the orders of the Church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers, answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, 
those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John, the forerunner, St. Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, St. James, the brother of the Lord, St. Marin, St. Joseph, and St. Agabus, and all of the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of, your, of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, 
God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation, that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Kulukhun. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
again and again. We thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful Lord, O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O God, the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Kruchunna. O Jesus, our Lord, protect us, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. 
favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protections of the living and bless them with hope through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and of all the saints now and forever. Amen. So as a reminder that there is still the coffee and there is a huge cake downstairs also to celebrate Shanini. And you're all more than welcome to go down following the Mass. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.